four horses going in the toughest steeplechase of them all, and it's typical Grand National weather. A chilly gray mist hangs over the famous course at Aintree, England. They're off, four and a half miles and 30 jumps to go. The very first jump claims its victims. have their eyes on Mr. Watt, the American-owned Irish horse that won last year and is 11 to 2 favorite to repeat. But the Grand National hasn't seen two successive victories by the same horse since Reynoldstown won it in 35 and 36. Now surprise packet, a 100 to 1 shot takes the lead for a while. Watt is spilled by a jump. The field is narrowing quickly. A slow motion study of misfortune. The dreaded jumps named Beecher's Brook and Valentine's Brook take a toll of 16 mounts between them. At the canal turn, some of the horses don't clear the barrier, but their jockeys do. By the second time around, only four horses left. Windberg and Oxo are neck and neck. A near stumble, but both keep going. clear a stretch and a chance to chat. Beastly weather, what? Oxo, number six, is beginning to pull away, but Winberg still has a challenge left. Mr. Watt is in third place, but way out of the running. Oxo staves off Winberg's final spurt. The $38,000 purse goes to an eight-to-one shot, one of four horses to finish, and a proud day for jockey Mike Scudamore. Wide Turf Classic. It's the $100,000 Washington, D.C. International at Laurel, Maryland. Ten horses from seven nations competing, and Russian Ambassador Menshikov's here to see the USSR entry, Garnier and Zaryan. First Soviet horses ever to race outside the Iron Curtain. It's a walk-up start. Foreign horses aren't trained for starting gates, but that's America's Tudor era racing out to take the lead. Ireland's Bally Moss, the favorite, back in the pack, with entries from the U.S., Germany, Australia, and South America. It's twice around, a mile and a half on the grass. <laughs> Rounding the turn for the second time, Tudor Era, still out in front, cuts across the oncoming Australian Sailor's Guide. An interference hardly noticeable to the crowd, but a big factor in the outcome. Now galloping down the home stretch, Tudor Era stays out in front, never to be headed. The Soviet horses are completely out of it. Sailor's Guide is running second, Bally Moss third. But Tudor Era, looking much the best, widens his front running margin with every stride as he pulls out to win it by three and a half length. Heading for the winner's circle is number nine, Tudor Era with Jockey Harmans. But a foul is claimed, and number five, Sailor's Guide with Jockey Grant is flashed the winner. The horse from Australia is the international champ. Defending champion Althea Gibson versus Darlene Hard in the national finals. Althea serves in the near court. And in the first set of this title match at Long Island's Forest Hills, the California girl gives the champ a real battle. Darlene's point. Will this be an upset or will Miss Gibson find her game? With the match standing a set apiece, Althea shows her famed title-winning form. It's now point set for the match and title. Althea Gibson is still the women's world champion. In the men's final, it's Australia's Mel Anderson and Ashley Cooper. Mel serves in the near court. And you're seeing the two top world tennis stars battle it out for the American title. Cooper's point. Anderson serves, and for sensational tennis, watch this rally. Anderson serves. 
Cooper has taken a lead in the fifth and final set. Then with victory within his reach, the Australian and Wimbledon champ sprains his ankle. It looks for a moment as though he will be forced to forfeit the match just when he's gained a slim lead. But he comes back gamely to win the next two games. Here's match point. Ashley Cooper is the world tennis champ for 1958. from seven countries gather at the top of the in-run for an international meet on the Olympic slide at Garmisch Partenkirchen in the Bavarian Alps. jumpers have adopted the new style with the arms well back instead of outstretched. Zanadel of Italy has to use his arms to try to ward off a spill, but without complete success. The new style pays off for Sakatsi of Russia, who takes second place. Here's Austria's Willy Egger. You can see the fall coming before it happens. And it's a rough one. Most of them soar on with the new style predominating. But the old style is good enough for Helmut Recknagel, probably the best jumper on the continent. The 21-year-old ace makes flights of 260 and 268 feet to win first place in a strong field. 